Hi, graphite. I like graphite. It's a specific arrangement of carbon atoms that is highly conductive, which also allows us to draw. Graphite has many applications, from pencils to DC motor brushes to some traces on electronics to battery carbon rods and more. This is a replacement lead of a mechanical pencil. It's not made of lead, of course, it's carbon. The reason they call it lead is the result of the same ignorance that resulted in calling the North American natives Indian. You know, those early explorers, when they found America, they thought they were in India, so they called them Indian. Later, British tried to fix it by eliminating natives, which they failed. So they took over India and tried to turn them into British, which they failed. Now we have to call the real Indians East Indian, South Asian, Asian Indian, or whatever to avoid mixing them with natives who were wrongfully accused of being Indian. I wasn't even involved. The point is that people were originally using leads to draw. So when they discovered graphite, they thought it does the same thing, so it must also be an Indian. One important note, the element of lead is highly poisonous and I hate it. It turns you into an idiot before it kills you. But I like graphite. Now let's pass some current through the pencil lead. That way I can measure its resistance. Wow, nowadays everything blows up. Let's try again. Wow, it lights up well. Now I'm running one amp and measuring voltage across around one centimeter. So for this particular piece, the resistance is 150 milliohms across one centimeter. And this is how they make potentiometers. Let's try 30 volt 10 amp. Just melted my alligator clip. Now let's kick it up a notch. I'm gonna run 10 amps through a regular pencil's graphite. Wow, this is getting. Oh my god! Whoa! Oh! Well, see, the graphite gets super hot and burns the wood around it, but it doesn't burn. That's why it's good for high temperature applications. Let's run 10 amps through this graphite and see how much it glows. <laughs> Look at this. Let me see if I can measure its temperature using my thermal camera. Wow, look at that. Right away it goes above the 330 degrees maximum of <laughs> By the way, I have four of these thermal cameras to give away at the end of my video. So these get very hot. Always wear safety gloves to protect your fingers and don't try this at home. Let me see if I can make some arcs. <laughs> Always wear safety goggles when dealing with very bright arcs. Let's try it again. Nice, look at that. Nice. Am I on fire? I suppose using the gardening gloves is not the best idea. You can get carbon rod from a carbon zinc battery. Not an alkaline battery, its structure is different. Make sure it says carbon zinc or heavy duty and it doesn't say alkaline or rechargeable. First you pull the cover off. Then you gently pull the battery rod out while turning it like this. Now I have double A battery rods, D size battery rods and some longer rods from my old 6 volt battery pack. And I have my super capacitor bank. I doubled the number of capacitors so I can charge them to 30 volts that can deliver more than 200 amps. Let's make some arcs now. <laughs> hey, my rods are burning? Ah, Goggles. Well, it wasn't the rods apparently. It seems like there is some flux in them that eventually burns out. Let's see if we can melt some copper with this. Look at that, people. Molten. Oh, sh. This glove is not good for this purpose. Good news to my supporters at patreon.com. I have four of these sick thermal cameras to give away. And if you're interested to buy their products at thermal.com, you can get a 20% discount with the promo code electroboom20 for a limited time. Ow, praise me, praise me. Are you watching Discovery Channel again?